Welcome to Why I Like Houdini 6.0. The topic this time is HDAs. And to start with, I always like to mention that this video is non-edited. It has mistakes, it may be sometimes a bit slow and maybe a bit fast. It is not scripted, I make it up as I go along. Well, not really, I prepare quite a bit actually. Um, the series is very brief introduction to Houdini concepts and it's not a classic click-along tutorial. I think it's very important when learning Houdini to know about the different available tools and concepts. I show what I like and try to explain why I like something. I also try to mention things that confused me when I started learning Houdini and using Houdini 1. So this time it's about HDAs. They used to be called OTLs. Um, yeah. It, actually matters to know what they used to be called because that's one thing where it gets confusing. Um, it's basically only a new name. It's the same thing to a degree. Um, the basics here, what I'm trying to show is sort of like an evolution. Um, so I think to know what HDAs do, you need to know a few other things before that. And for that, you need to know about network boxes, sub-networks versus HDAs. And I'm trying to differentiate between local and global HDAs. That's not a terminology by side effects. That's my own. But we come to this in a second. So, actually, a few months ago, I was thinking about doing a new series about HDAs. And then Jeff Wagner and side effects popped up and actually made webinars about this. They are about five, six hours. I don't know exactly. They have three parts. They cover a lot of the basics. And actually, I really like that about um, Jeff. He really is trying to go to the very basics. And um, they get also quite advanced. So watch them if you want to really know about HDAs. But the thing that I think you should know beforehand and before you learn all that stuff, um, I'm trying to explain here. So let's zoom out a bit. To start with, Houdini uses networks of nodes and this can get quite complex. Sometimes it looks a little bit like this. And to find your way around in here, what you can do is you can use network boxes and group things. You'll find them up here. All you need to do is select two nodes or however many ever and you can put a network box around it. Very handy. Then those things are grouped and you can give it a name and you sort of know what's happening in this box. So when I did this here, it already helped me navigate around here when I was building this network, which actually builds something. Part of the next video that I'm doing. But while you're developing something like this, um, it makes sense to use network boxes. And the next, let's say, evolutional, ev evolutional step up from there is uh, subnetworks. Subnetworks are, um, they, w when you create a subnetwork, let's put those two things in a subnetwork, uh, that's that box up here, everything becomes one. I'm just undoing this again. Already did this here. So this is what I actually did here. By using subnetworks, I made this really complex thing into a little bit less complex thing and network. Um, so this network is a lot less complex. That's less nodes. But when you dive into those, it gets complex again, but it sort of allows you to to make things a little bit easier. And what you can already do in subnetworks, which is pretty great, is by pressing that gear button here and going into edit parameter interface. You can you can create an interface when by pressing P. I've already made an interface for this here. It's pretty simple. It only allows you to input a text and set two distances. Um, okay, 
So this is something you can do with subnetworks. HDAs, you can do a lot more. And I prepared a little slide for this. So what can you do with network boxes? You can organize your network and you can group nodes. Yep, with subnets you can do that as well. And on top you get a parameter interface. With HDAs you get even more. You can do versioning, sharing and reusing with other users and with yourself. You can create a library. Um, you can create handles. Um, I'll show that in a second what a handle is. You have much more possibilities with scripts. And you can even use what you build as an HDA and other software using the fabulous Houdini engine. So this is sort of like the story here. And when you create an HDA, let's say you want to turn this, um, the subnetwork here, into an HDA. You go on Asset, New Digital Asset from Selection, and it will ask you where to save this. This is something that really, really confused me in the beginning because to start with, it says here OTL and not HDA. And I was like, where to save it? And Jeff explains really well, like how to save things and all the stuff about the, uh, you will find that here about the asset manager. Yeah, pretty cool, actually. Houdini is made of assets. It's full of them. Actually, side effects builds Houdini to a degree um, from digital assets. They're all here. Most things are digital assets, and you can even look at them, dive inside, and learn from it. So. Again, this really confused me. I'm going back here, going new asset from selection, where to save your stuff. You could either save it locally, and what I mean by locally is you can save it in the file location um, of your scene. And it, this is what it is here on the right, and it the arrow points to the HDA folder. How do you get that HDA folder? What you do and need to do is create projects. You should create projects all the time here with file, new project, and what you get there is what you see there on the right. Um, you get a geo folder, an HDA folder, and so on and so on. And when you save something with your scene in that project, that HDA is what I would call a local HDA, which is only available in this project. So when I press the tab key here and type local, it is available. If I open a new um, instance of Houdini now, let's do this quickly. There's another Houdini. If I go in here, put down the GeoNode, dive in here, delete the file node, and type local, it's not there. Yeah? So this HDA is only available in this project. The global ones the ones that you are saving in the other folder on the left, in the OTLs folder, that's the default. You can change that as way as you want to uh, by editing the Houdini OTL scan pass in your Houdini environment. Any that might be too much for you. I think actually it's cool like it is as default. For, to, for me, that's enough. I don't change it. And the global HDAs um, I will save in that folder. So how to decide what is a global HDA and what should be a local HDA? Um, let's put it this way. Let's say you're building something like this. This is a lot of Venetian blinds and one of the parts is the blade of the Venetian blind of one of those. Yeah, It is... Uh, 
a little bit bent and has got two holes here. And the nice thing is, this is an HDA. And, if, uh, yeah, and I've got like a little interface for it here, up, up here. I can change the width of it. But what I can also do is I can actually change the size here. And this actually changes the bend. Doesn't just scale it up and down. This now it's flat. Now it's round. And what else? Yeah, and the the depth width, whatever you will call it, of this. So I actually have my own handle. And this is something that you can only do with HDAs. Subnetworks, you don't get those handles. Um, how to to do that? Um, you go in to to edit. You have to uh, to edit the HDA. You have to unlock the asset. It's already unlocked. You can go in and um, now write. Oh, this is a pain. Let's put this up here. Move it up. You have to go to type properties and you get a very similar um, interface that you also get on the gear icon. Don't confuse this. Very important. One of the mistakes made all the time. Jeff also mentioned this in his video. It gets confusing. So when you have your HDA, which is local, it's saved in the local directory and the global one is there. So you will never need this Venetian blind again in another project unless it's another Venetian blind. But a more global HDA example I've got here, and that's my, I call it the Orient Circle. Hmm. Basically, it creates lots of points but those points already have orient attributes and which is cool. So let's show the parameters, more or less points and change the radius. And you can also say how many degrees you want. <coughs> yeah, pretty cool. And you can use this. I need this all the time. So I made this a global HDA. It will be uh, available to me anytime I start a new instance of uh, Houdini, I will get this. So, what else did I want to talk about? I think that's almost it. Yeah, I mentioned the OTL scan pass, and yeah, yeah, maybe. Why do I like it so much? I can make my own plugins. I can change the functionality of the software. I can share it. Um, and that's it for today. Thanks for watching.